Oh, no. High piercing sound. Say that again. Heard a little a bit of a high piercing sound in this room. Kind of like. Did you hear that? I didn't hear that. In that other room, was over there. Heard like a weird sound too. Kind of. I don't know. It was almost like somebody was breathing. Kind of like. I said, "Can you do it again?" Kind of looked around. I didn't hear anything on the ceiling at all. And they did like another couple times. Now unexplained. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the birthplace of America, home to the Liberty Bell, Independence Hall, where the Declaration of Independence and Constitution were signed. So much history, and some say a lot of ghosts. The unexplained team traveled to the city of brotherly love to investigate several paranormal hotspots known to be haunted by the spirits from the Revolutionary War of famous business owners and politicians some really crazy dressed apparitions, and possibly a pirate too. Next stop, the world famous Mummers Museum. Most parades, well they have floats, pageant queens, and marching bands. And then there is the annual Mummers Day Parade in Philly, which is wild and a lot of fun. The Mummers Parade is held every New Year's Day in Philadelphia. The first official parade was held January 1st, 1901. The parade is related to the Mummers Play tradition from Britain and Ireland. All right, well, right now we are in the staff library, which is on the third floor of the Mummers uh, Museum here in Philadelphia. So what is the Mummers Museum? Well, it's kind of a celebration of all the parades that they've had since the early 1900s. An extra extravagant party, sort of like a Mardi Gras here in Philadelphia. Now, uh, we talked to some of the people that have worked here for a number of years, and they told us that this museum is haunted. Take a listen to what they told us. Feels like you're never alone. When I close up in the evening and everything's all dark, you, d you feel like someone's there, but not in a bad way. We've never experienced anything negative. They're mummers, so they're very friendly and very happy. What is a mummer? A mummer could be uh, anyone, it's a group, a group, kind of like a Mardi Gras, okay. but very organized. Okay. And we started way back in 1901, and we're still here. And there's several groups. We have string bands, we have fancy brigades, we have wenches, we have clowns. Mm -hmm. And it's just a, an organized parade. That is very cool. Now you said something about the elevator. Tell me about that. The elevator has a mind of its own. The elevator sometimes lets you on and sometimes it don't. Sometimes it'll take you to a floor you want to go to and sometimes it don't. Mm -hmm. So most people always... There was a Joe Furka who was one of the original um, string bands presidents, and we always say Joe Furka. It could what be mean. Joe. It could be Joe. It could, could be, be anybody, but it could be Joe. We say it's Joe Furka. Because if you're here by yourself and it opens and you expect someone to come out and nobody comes out, we always say oh, it's Joe. So I know it's probably a silly question, but would you, would you say that this is a haunted location from all the things you've experienced then? I think it is, but when you say haunted, I'm not going to say in a negative way because we've never had any ne negativity. It's always been very, very pleasant. Just like a mummer, happy and pleasant. Donna has investigated this place many times, saying it is very active. We were in for a treat. The museum allowed the Unexplained Cases team to check out the haunted third floor, a place where the public is rarely allowed. Very cool. Looks King like that's Robert. all in great condition. Yeah. Fancy 1978. Yeah. You feeling fancy? I don't know about you, but I'm feeling fancy. So this, uh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, eight tracks, baby. Come on, come on. Yep. That's the way I'm, uh -huh, uh -huh. I like it. Let's see what we got here. It's uh, some Donna tracks. Summer. Oh, hey, yeah. Mama's narration, Manny's narration. Museums, museum, let's see, it looks like Cut Man Away. Eight track. Any mummer will tell you. Oh, okay, all right, cool. Mm-hmm. 
house of Bruce. God, look at all this stuff, man. This is pretty cool up here. Well, and then we've got uh, Best of the Mummers, Philadelphia String Bands. Bum, 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 you know? Bum, 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 mummers. we got some... <laughs> So, in case we actually get slapped uh, for being disrespectful, basically, that's highly possible. Mummers. Uh, um, Hello, Mummers. My name's Darren. This is Rick. Our first stop was this old storage room, and our equipment quickly started going off. The Mel meter was fluctuating up and down, and its REM pod function was going off, indicating something was hovering around it. Take a listen. Okay, that's weird. All right, so I was just talking about. Uh huh. Some kind of an alarm, but it didn't, yeah. there was no spike. Okay, so I was just talking about how in Alton I had a pain in my back, which, I mean, let's face it, I, I don't, I'm not going to call any type of. That could be a muscle pain or anything like that. But at the time, we were basically surrounded by spirits. And so I was just commenting to Darren without this guy rolling that. I feel like I was having that feeling again, and you just heard it when I turned this uh, yeah, on. Our millimeter slash REM pod just went off. I don't know what that was. That was weird. Well, I mean, it was just sitting right here, but right. you didn't see a spike. No, I didn't. There was no spike. Mm. You kind of. I don't know. How's that? Oh, okay. Is it your camera? No. No. It's REM pod, something setting it off. Something setting it off, but just before that happened, I, I got. Oh, is it the battery? Mm, well, okay, so a couple of things we could have going on here. I'm feeling lightheaded, and I just had like a pain in my temple. A second later, that went off. Battery. Battery. But, battery. but you still had some kind of a feeling. This is a weird kind of vibe in this room. The library's over there on the other side. This is a storage area. And supposedly people have had experiences up here, but what's cool about us being up here is this, uh, this is closed off to the public. So uh, we might be the first investigators or one of the first to actually come up here and see if there's any spirits, any paranormal activity. So a lot of stuff going on already. Feeling kind of shaky and chills and I don't know, it's weird. So we got the REM pod set up here. We'll see if we have any more activity on it. Right? What is crazy, I had just put a brand new battery in that mel meter, and whatever was in the room with us was sucking the life out of it. It caused a mixture of lights and sounds. We also use our SB7 spirit box to communicate with spirits. It uses the white noise from radio frequencies to allow the dead to speak with the living. And Jack went over. Hi. Is this Jack? Yeah. You were so clear. It's so nice to, to speak to you. Hello. Were you part of landing? Were you part of landing? Yes, you were. Yes, I was. Did you hear? Mm -hmm. Okay, because you said your name so clearly, and I, and you know, I was talking to Irene, and then, yeah, and Shannon, and Shannon figured it out that you must have been um, one of the founders of Landy. Correct? Well, it's so wonderful to talk to you, and thank you for it. You know, Thank you for it, you Thank you for it, you Thank you for it, you You're talking. Yes, you are. Thank you so much for talking. And thank you so much for coming. But I'm so happy to be here again. Donna used her dousing rods again um, and connected with what she believes were the spirits of mummers dead and gone, but still hanging out in the museum. In, in case anyone does not remember me or someone is new, I won't presume. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you so much for welcoming us today. My name is Donna. Uh, I have a small uh, paranormal group called Philly Ghost Hunt, and uh, I'd like to come to talk to you guys and have 
communication and ladies, of course, and uh, see how you're doing. I was here a little over a year ago uh, and did, did a big investigation. And so I've returned with two friends. This is Rick and Darren. Hello. Um, and neither are from Philadelphia. So all of this is new to them. And the Mummers Museum is new. And they were very excited about coming. That's that's Rick. Absolutely. Yes. Hello. Um, so uh, I brought a few uh, forms, a few tools for communication. And one certainly over dowsing rods. And I see that you, you have them at this point. I feel that. You're right in front of me, basically. Yeah. And uh, I, I, so there, there are a couple of ways we can use them. The first is to answer yes and no questions. And uh, if your answer is yes, you can open them wide, and that would mean yes. If, you, if your answer is no, you can close them and cross them, and then your answer is no. Uh, if you don't have an answer or you're neutral, uh, you don't wish to answer, it's not applicable, or you're just ready for the next question and you'd like to move on straight ahead, well, let me know that. But it wasn't just the equipment that stopped us in our tracks. For me, yeah, it was a strange sound. Someone breathing that literally made the hair stand up on my neck. It happened in another storage area on the third floor. Say that again. Heard a little a bit of a high piercing sound in this room. Did you hear that? I didn't hear that. And that other room was over there. Heard like a weird sound too. Kind of, I don't know. It was almost like somebody was breathing, kind of like. I said, can you do it again? <sighs> kind of looked around. Damn, I didn't hear anything on the ceiling at all. And they did like another couple times. <sighs> now, unexplained. Was that, was that the It was where our sto- the storage room, where we got, uh, we're keeping all our stuff. Okay. I was like standing there, all of a sudden, just kind of like looking at everything. And then I heard, <sighs> hair stood up on the back of my neck. I'm like, what the heck was that? <sighs> again. And then I said, "Can you do that again for me?" <sighs> wow. And I don't think I don't think it had anything to do with the building. I mean, I don't know what would make a breathing sound. So uh, that was pretty crazy. Crazy. Did you did you move in? <laughs> did you scare Darren? <laughs> and we're glad to meet you, Dad. So yeah. so here here's a little slice of fun. Okay. So and I just got it verified but I wanted to stick the camera in your face a little bit. So first first off, uh, she got on the rods and I got on here recorded that, you know, they were scaring you. So The, yeah, the they, breathing? Yeah. They, they, yeah, you know, yeah. they, fessed, they fessed up I got, that, I got, that it was them. I've got, I've got chills. Or, or, or I, I guess... Here you go, there's a... Yeah. You, you know, Who was it? Was it a woman or a man? I, I woman? said that's what I thought it was a woman. Oh, okay. It was, so that's what I thought it was. Well, I thought it was a woman going... Man? And like three times, oh, it was a man. It was like three, like, three okay. times in a row. I'm like, can you do it again? Yeah. So that was an, oh, oh hello. Is that you? Yeah. So that was you that was uh, breathing in the room with me and scaring me? Yeah. Yes. We also ran into some strange interference on the SLS camera. It wouldn't shut down and appeared to have someone unseen messing with it. Ghost? Malfunction? A gremlin in the system? We're not sure. But we do know for a fact we've never had this problem ever before or since. Oddly enough, when we asked if someone was messing with the camera, Donna's rods indicated they were. And 
and same person who was playing with the little screen that was in front of me? No, that was somebody else. Was that someone else? Oh, there's so many people here, you can't even keep up with them. That was somebody else. That was someone else. Okay. So, what I didn't tell you was that while I was trying to shut down uh, the, the computer screen over there, okay, I thought it had, like, gotten, a, you know, a bunch of commands. Like, it wasn't responding, and so it, like, it kept, like, you know, kind of glitching. Right. So, I stopped, and it kept glitching. So, then I decided, let me roll on this. And it just kept going. And I was like, there's absolutely no way that I That's put in weird. that many touches. And so then they verified that they were over there just playing with it. So they're playing with all the equipment and then breathing to scare me. Yes, yes. Right? It worked. <laughs> I mean, trust me, it scared me. The Mummers Museum was fantastic. And during our brief visit, we seemed to make a few new ghostly friends. Philadelphia, home to legendary football fans, Freedom, Cheesesteak Sandwiches, Rocky, and clearly ghosts. During our visit, we gathered some compelling evidence that made the trip to the city of brotherly love well worth it. Reporting for Unexplained Cases in Philadelphia, I'm Darren Dito.